And how many know that sometimes you have more months than money? Amen. And that might happen to you. So, you know, give like, you know, you might be the next one that needs to be blessed. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Bring it on back up here and we're going to give. Amen. Praise the Lord. Just pass it through in Jesus name. Glory to God. If you're going to give in the offering, just lift your hand and he'll know where to go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Father. Lift your hand and he won't have to do all of that. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm like that. Amen. In Jesus' name. Ain't no sense in going by something that ain't happening. Praise the Lord. Come on. Give God some glory in it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on and give God a clap. Praise for giving. Amen. Now it's time for our turnaround seat. God bless you streaming. Amen. Glory to God. If you would like to get into a turnaround seat this morning on streaming, uh, uh, I advise you to go to the website. Are you already on the website? Go back in and go to the Give button and hit it right there and use your debit card or your credit card and you can give into that. Sow a seed for something new to happen in your life. God is doing a new thing and things might be old that's happening in your life right now, but through the grace of God, amen, through your faith. How many know it's faith? It is faith, amen. Everything that happens is through faith, amen. So you have to have faith for something to happen. The word of God says that the only way to please God is through faith. Amen. And no matter where the word, what the word is, saints of God, it is your faith that is going to move God. Come on and give him a, uh, just lift it up to him. What's going on in your life that you need to be turned around? Your finances need to turn around. Your relationships need to turn around. Your dedication to God needs to turn around. Your life for him needs to turn around. What is it that you need to turn around in? This is what our turnaround seed is about. You know, maybe it's not even about you. Maybe it's for your wife or maybe it's for your husband. Maybe it's for your children. Amen. Maybe it's for uh, this nation. Amen. Maybe it's for this city. Whatever it's for, God will hear you. How many know that he hears you and he will move on you in Jesus' name? Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. We come from this where, where the, the wise men went to see Jesus. Amen. They went to worship and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And they were sent by Pharaoh. And they went with good intentions because Pharaoh went and said, go find the chosen child. Go find this baby because I want to go worship too. But it wasn't so. Pharaoh wanted them to find Jesus so that he could, he could destroy him. Amen. Praise the Lord. But that's not what happened, amen. When they found him, they worshipped him. They worshipped him with their physicalness. And then they worshipped him with substance that were important, amen. Brother Michael, Brother Eddie's uh, up there. They brought their gold and their frankincense and their myrrh, amen. And those were important, amen. And they were costly things. And so God is saying, not only do you bring uh, yourself, but you need to bring something that is important to you. And how many know your finances are important to you? <laughs> They're so important to you that you don't give according to the word of God, but yet you still expect the blessing that God has to give to those who are obedient to him. Amen. And then after all of that, after they worship and praise, well, God sent them out another way. He turned them around and went another way. He said, don't go back the way that you've come, but go out another way. Amen. And so they did. And it was a turnaround for them in their life. Amen. Glory to God. And I pray that those of you that came to the altar with sincereness, knowing that God is your answer, that you'll have your turnaround seed. Come on and give God another clap. Praise. That you'll have your turnaround in your life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give God some glory. You know, I, I, I just you may be seated. I discern in my spirit that there are people in the house. Amen. That came this morning and you're downtrodden in your spirit. And, you know, and if you'll open yourself up to God, God will open himself up to you. He will enter in in Jesus name. Come on. It's time to praise the Lord. Come on, sister. Sister Bree. Come on and give God a clap. Praise. Come on, everybody. If you're not on your feet, get on your feet because God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You asking for a turnaround and you want it immediately. Get on your feet. Hallelujah. Woo! Come on, choir. Here we go. Say. I came in this place so burdened down. Yeah. Tried to lift my head, but I was bound. Hey. Praise the Lord, I got a 
God said to me, Woo! If you're praising now, I get the victory. So I with my hand, open my mouth, open my mouth, and immediately, immediately God worked it out. So I lifted my hand, open my mouth, open my mouth, and immediately, immediately. God Let's do it again. Out. Say, I came in this place. I came in this place so burdened down. Tried to lift my Tried head. Tried to lift my head, but I was bound. Then the Lord. Then the Lord, my God, said to me. If I praise him now. If I praise him now. Somebody I clap your hands. So I lift my head. Open my mouth. Open my and mouth. And immediately. Immediately. God worked it out, so I lifted my hand, opened my mouth, my mouth and immediately, immediately, God worked it out. Now listen, it doesn't matter, come on, your condition, let this be your disposition, it doesn't matter, your condition, but let this be your disposition doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your condition. Your condition. Let this be. Let this be. Your disposition. Your disposition. See, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Woo! All that matters is what he said. You are to lift your head. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And immediately. And immediately. Yes, he will. I'll work it out. You are to lift your head. Open your mouth and immediately, and immediately, yes, he God will work it out. Now, all of you in here waiting for God to do a turnaround for you, I need you to give God a shout of praise. Because he wants it to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will do it for you immediately. Yes, he will. Glory. Hallelujah. I didn't have to wait for it. I didn't have to look nowhere. I didn't have to wait for Come on, it. Say it. He did it immediately. Say it again. Didn't have to wait for didn't have to look no. I didn't have to wait for it. He did it immediately. Immediately. Just like Paul is to wait Didn't have to look no. Didn't have to wait for it. Didn't have to look no. I didn't have to wait for it. Wait for it. God did it immediately. He did it. He did it immediately. He did it. He did, he did it immediately. He did it. Yeah. He did it immediately. He did it. Woo. Well, yes, he did. he did. Somebody clap your hands in here. Yes, he did. He did it. Are y'all ready to go to church? Yes, he did it. He did it. Come on, say it again. Yes, he did it. He did it. Woo. Yes, God did it. He did it. Say, yes, he did. He did it. Yeah, Jesus did it. Did it. Oh, Jesus did it. Did it. Y'all don't wait. Don't wait for the battle is over. Woo! No, don't wait. Don't wait for the battle is over. You gotta stop. Don't wait. Don't wait for the battle is over. No, no. Give God a shout. When did he do it? Immediately. I said, when did he do it? Immediately. Hey, when did he do it? Immediately. See, I need somebody to testify that he did it. Immediately. Oh, don't wait. Don't wait for the battle is over. Give God a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. We come to bless the Lord this morning. Who come to bless the Lord? Hallelujah. I said he did it immediately. Praise the Lord. Don't wait for the battle to be over. Shout now. Amen. Don't wait for your Red Sea to be crossed. Shout before you get over there. You may be seated this morning, eh? this afternoon. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Praise the Lord. You know who you are. Praise the Lord. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. <laughs> so
So you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could let everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving. Oh. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was. Ah, so you clean me up. So you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrifice. So you sacrifice your life. So I, so I could be free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving. Yeah, yeah. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. This is what Jesus thought about us. So you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. No matter what. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving. That's what Jesus thought about all of us. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. You know what he did then, saints? So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. Yes, you did. You sacrificed your life. So. So. Yeah. Tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory. To the God. To the God who changed my life. And I will pay. Forever. 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 Because you're worthy. Forever. And you're worthy. Cause I am free, because I am whole, and I will tell everyone I know, you thought I was worth saving, yeah, yeah, you came and changed my life, you thought I was worth keeping, yes you did, so you came, so you cleaned me up inside, you thought I was So I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. Hallelujah! Oh, glory! Glory to the God who changed my life, and I will praise you and I worship you. Because you're worthy, I give you praise. I'm free because I am whole. Because I will tell everyone I know. Hallelujah. Glory. Somebody say to the God. And I will praise you, and I'll worship you, and I'll give you glory, because you're worthy. And I'll worship you, and I'll give you glory, because you're worthy, because, because I am free, because I am whole, and I will tell everyone I know, you thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Yes, you did. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. You thought I thought I was to die for. Even though I live like a wretch, 
you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Come on and give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Those that are free, those that are recognized that what God has done for us. Amen. Praise the Lord. I say those of us that recognize what God has done for us, we give him glory and praise in the house. Amen. Glory to God. Why will you please stand to your feet and recognize the man of God in this house? A pastor like no other, amen, praise the Lord, that has been in, this, in, in the, uh, the field, amen, that is fully white with harvest for 21 years, amen, our very own pastor, Kenneth Lawrence. Somebody come on and give him glory in the house. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Touch your neighbor next to you and say, why don't you open your mouth and praise God? He the one gave you a voice. Not you yourself. Amen. Why don't you open your mouth and give that voice to God? You done gave it to hell. You done gave shouts to dances, music in the world, shout to football game, shout. Won't you shout for God just one time if he is your creator? So glad to see everyone here in the house this morning in Jesus' name. I know that God got this is not a religious set. Touch your neighbor and say, you're not in religious set. So right now, we are breaking all your religious rule right now. We are breaking all your religious, and watch this, on purpose. We come to wreck all your religious rules up in here. Amen. Because God didn't come in religious. He came through Jesus Christ. And I believe that when once you get a word from God, it'll change whatever got you by But people have set God up in their own mindset of what God's supposed to be. But not up in here. We don't set him up in the word. And that's what God's supposed to be. It's by his word. Can somebody give God praise? And touch your neighbor and say, I'm a radical praise. I I, I don't learn how to release myself to God. I, I don't learn how to be free to praise him. Sing for him and dance for him and fight for him. Whatever it takes, I do it in the freedom of Christ. Woo, hallelujah. I'm not one of those preachers that's bent over and, and just can't talk good and, and, and just sit down and, you know, have to be polite to you. I'm not under your feet. I've refused to be up under your feet. I am totally free to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ without trying to hold myself to the popularity of the people. Oh, come on, somebody. I want to please God and not man. How many of y'all want to please God and not a man? Give God some praise then. Give God some glory then. Worship your God like he's real among you. And don't be ashamed of your God. Let everybody know what he's done for you. You're in church and this is the time for you to celebrate. You can't celebrate on the job. You, you can't celebrate it sometime around your house. But you're in a freedom place. You're in his house. You're in your daddy's house. And therefore it's time for you to celebrate that you are in his house. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Excuse me, excuse me. Sit down for a moment. I'm going to, amen, just talk a little bit about the, some things coming up. I'm excited about this meeting, encountering the supernatural of the Holy Spirit. It's strange when you talk to people about the Holy Ghost. People don't believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. But the Bible said in Matthew 3, 11, indeed, I baptize you with water. And that's somewhere all of us been is in water. Amen. amen. Just been in water. Water baptism ain't moved you out of your sin yet. Water baptism hasn't even moved out of your natural flesh yet. All it did was supposed to kill the old man, but it's still alive. But I think oh, uh, uh, my man said, uh, John the Baptist said it good. He said, but I baptize you with water, but that's one mightier than I. Whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. Says in the scriptures. He will. Jesus, he's talking about Jesus. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So when you see my holler, preach like I do it, it's on fire. 
Will you see Medas is on fire? Will you see these people of Moran? They on fire. So God got something to give us that the world can't give us, not tradition, not religion. So this, I think this, this moment that's coming, I'm going to see many people baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's my expression. And people scatter the Spirit of God. Because they don't know why you moving like you moving. Amen. Because you're not walking in the natural. You're walking in the spirit. There's something greater in me. That make me who I am. There's something greater in me. Causing me to preach. There's something greater in me. Causing me to move beyond your natural reasons. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit come and dwell in your life. And that's why you need to read the Bible. Because when you read the Bible, you see Samson didn't tear down his, this arena with by himself. It was the Holy Ghost. And you see that David didn't knock his giant out by just throwing a rock. All of us could throw rocks. Amen. But it ain't never tucked down anybody. You see David throwing a rock under the unction of the Holy Spirit. You see Jesus himself walking in the earth doing miracles, not by his flesh, but by God's Spirit. And if you allow God to get in you like this here, you'll understand my praise. If you let God get in you like this, you'll understand the reason why we cry. The reason why we sing. The reason why we praise. And the reason why we worship. And the reason why we love God so much. And the reason why we love the word of God so much. And the reason why we love to come to church. When you get some of this in you. God will change your life. <laughs> I want to thank all the praise team, amen, dance team, and also uh, uh, the praise team that uh, went to the funeral yesterday. Yeah, and uh, really changed people's life. We didn't have a funeral like out in every funeral. You had to have mourners. People didn't even have time to cry. Amen. They were so happy. We had surpassed their understanding of what it's like to be in a funeral. Because God's presence had hit that place. And I want to thank all the praise team, dance team, amen, for your sacrifice to give somebody else peace, to give somebody else joy. God always returned it back to you a thousand times. Not only that the family was very pleased and, and joyful and, and blessed because of it, but there's other people that visit that place, amen, couldn't, couldn't even quit talking about what has happened in that moment. See, the moment that you bring before people should not be you. Amen. They ain't nothing but your flesh. You should bring the presence of God at every intent that you possibly can in a moment of time because you don't know who else need to be influenced and who else need to be turned around and who else need God in the mix of it. I've always been this, this liberated person about God. I, I never have been a person been buying a shame and trying to trying to promote you to believe in me and persuade you to like me. I don't care if you like me or not. Amen. Guess what? I don't like you neither. <laughs> Tell them that. I don't like them neither. Amen. I don't like nobody. Amen. I have to love you. Yes, but th just remember this. I'm not here to persuade you to like me. Amen. I'm not here to persuade you to love me. If God don't make you love me, it'll be in vain anyway. Yes, if God don't make you my friend, you'll never be my friend. Because I'm going to turn over you. If you go against God. Amen. Amen. That's why I'm not a sure friend to you. If you go against God. You think I'm going to be a friend to you in your naturality. I don't care nothing about that. It's all about Jesus Christ to me. And I care less what people think about me. It's all about him. So every time I get a chance to stand before you. I'm going to stand before you in the presence of God. And behoove the people that stand before people without the presence of God. Be who the people that stand before other people without the presence of God. You being a witness in the body of Christ. Hey Amen. It's a sad thing that you stand before others without the presence. Amen. You're either too shame about it or you don't have none in you. Don't live right. One of the two. Every soul is important to God. Not one soul. Every soul. Every soul. That means one soul is important to God. And therefore you should not ever take the advantage of your opportunity to live your natural reason out before others. You should have a critical moment on the inside of you every time you face people that Jesus shine out of your life. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I wish Christians would get that in them and understand you are the changer of the world, not the world changing you. Amen. And Christ has given you himself for you to change the world. Amen. Hallelujah. 
But our biggest fight is not so much, amen, it's not having a Christ that has given himself to us. Our biggest fight is trying to break out of these realms and, and these corners and these, these imprisonment that's in our mind that keep us not God, but half of God. That's our biggest fight, amen. Amen. It's showing, it's trying to get rid of ourselves and show God. That's the biggest fight. What has been planted in our mind, what God is. Because if you really was had God in you, it'd be no, no time wasted that you'll waste any time any longer telling somebody about Jesus. Amen. Or shining Jesus in a serious situation. Amen. When crisis comes, Jesus should show up. Amen. In your life, not you. And that's what we are striving to do is get ourselves back in a place. Now, I'm, I'm, not, I'm striving to get you there. Amen. But if you don't make it, I hope you do. But if you don't, I'm going to be there. Because that's where I want to be at. And that's what I'm going to live like the rest of my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to thank everybody that made up that glorious moment yesterday that changed people's life. It encourages people. Amen. People heard the word. They, they saw the liberty of the people of God singing for God, loving God. Amen. And, and Pastor, co-pastor Lawrence did a marvelous thing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And I'll tell you what. Let me just say this for a moment. How many of y'all been trapped in religious? Amen. How many of y'all glad that this church not in religion? Amen. Well, stand up like you know God set you free. You can't say this. You can't do this too much. Religious do not provoke freedom. They come against freedom. I had a woman told me one time I had the church praise. She pointed at me in her seat and said, you shouldn't do that in this house. I said, you sit down, you religious spirit. Who are you? Because we were praising God lied. And God silenced her mouth. And son out of the door. Amen. Religious get mad at your freedom. Yes, I call it a Cain spirit that is against Abel spirit. How many of you got Abel spirit? I'm able to praise him. I'm able to worship him. I'm able to serve him. I'm able to depend on him. Hallelujah. God killed that Cain spirit. And use us if you have to. To bring your people out of religion. That they may live in reality. <laughs> now this show would hurt them. What's about to happen now. Will hurt your religious self. I got one of my daughters. Amen. That is called to the gospel. For a long time they fought women preachers. And they still fight women preachers. But I know that's not but religion. Amen. But God has called her. Matter of fact, she's one of our pastors here. Let me say this and bring you on, baby. How in the world can you talk against a woman like that and put, let me get, I'm streaming right now. How in the world, streaming, you could talk against a woman preacher like that when you didn't talk about Mary that carried Jesus. Hallelujah. It was Mary that heard the voice of God first before men encountered Jesus in his flesh. I know Isaiah prophesied. I know that. Amen. But all of a sudden Mary prophesied. Because she had a revelation. Not only a revelation, she had Christ. And she had a message on what his purpose were before man heard the message. Come on, invite to the pool pit, amen, this evening, Pastor to Taylor Lawrence, as she come and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor. Give God a clap praise for our men of God. Amen. Amen. Praise be unto God for our pastor. Amen.
and give God a clap praise that you are in the house of God this morning. Amen. You have made your way out. Amen. I know that you have come with an expectation because you are here in the house. Amen. And give God all glory and honor just for who he is, that he woke you up with breath today. Amen. That he has given you sight. He has given you your hearing. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. So give God a clap praise this morning. Hallelujah. At this time, I would like to go ahead and dismiss our children, amen, to their classrooms. Amen. Go and have a blessed time this evening. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got some little preachers in the house. They'll quote a scripture on you real fast. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And cast the devil past to say amen. Hallelujah. Just want to give honor to my woman of God as well. Amen. Hallelujah, with such a blessed, mighty, virtuous woman of God that we have to stand before us. Amen, that we have someone to look to, sisters, amen, and, and to follow, amen, as she follows after Christ. And again, to my pastor, God bless you, pastor, amen. I'm so blessed, amen, to be able to be a part of this congregation, amen. In Jesus' name, just thanking God for all that he does. Amen, are y'all ready to get into the word this morning? Amen, let's lift up your Bibles, let's make our confession. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer and not a doubter. I am a doer and not just a hearer. And my life is to better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord God. We just give you praise and glory for your spirit that is already in this house. We thank you, Lord God, that you will make yourself available, Lord God, that the manifestation and the miracles of your word will take place this morning. We ask that you will have your way in the house, Lord God, that you will use me as your vessel this morning to speak to your people, Lord God. Speak to every situation, Lord God. Turn everything around, Father God. Edify and build your people this morning, Father. I pray, Lord God, for that anointing abiding on the inside to be stirred up in the name of Jesus to destroy every yoke and lift every burden this morning and father God I loose your ministering angels right now father to minister to your people I command that every ear be open to the voice of God and the voice of God only and I speak to every heart to be ready to receive the word in the name of Jesus we give you praise and glory we thank you Lord God for your miracles Lord God and we thank you Lord God for your presence Lord in the name of Jesus we give you praise and glory and we all said amen give God a clap praise as you take your seat this morning Hallelujah. As Pastor was saying about Mary, amen, being a woman, amen, carrying the word of God, how she carried Jesus on the inside of her, being a woman preacher, she was carrying the word. Amen. She had the word on the inside of her. Amen. So praise be unto God. I don't understand how they could come against that because Jesus is the word, saints of God. And so she was carrying all of the Bible on the inside. Amen. I think that's pretty powerful. Amen. And not only that, but we can carry the word on the inside because not only did Mary, amen, was able to carry Jesus. Amen. But now we are able to carry Jesus. Amen. On the inside by his spirit. He said, I'm not going to leave you without. I'm not going to leave you without no help, but I'm going to send myself back to you because I needed the spirit of God to walk this earth and to proclaim the gospel and cast out demons and heal the sick. Amen. And so I'm going to send my spirit back to you so that you can do greater than what I've done. Amen. Pastor gave us a scripture last week about uh, that it was a scripture written that said that if we was to or if they were to write everything that Jesus done the world couldn't even hold it all. Amen. Not a book but the world can't hold it all. A book could not hold everything that Jesus done. And when he said that I was like but Jesus said we would do even greater. So not only of what we have here in the Bible, but we can do even greater of the things, amen, that has not been revealed according in the Bible. Amen. Praise be unto God for that. We're going to continue. Pastor's been teaching us, amen, about the Bible. What better thing to, to meditate and to read than the Bible? Amen. Praise be unto God. And the pastor said, why are you going to go read somebody else's book if you're not reading the Bible? Amen. The Bible, amen, is our guide. It is our life. It is the way to Jesus Christ. It is the way to please God. Amen. Praise be to God. When you go to a job, they give you your instructions, your duties. This is your job. This is what you do. This is how you get a raise. This is how you acc accumulate PTO and all those kind of things. They give you a guideline on how to be successful at your job. And for you to be successful on your job, you must do those things they have listed, amen, on your job duties. 
And amen. The word of God is the same thing, saints of God. It is our instructions to be successful. It is our instructions, amen, to live this life pleasing unto God and living in the life that he has promised us. He said, I will give you long life, abundant life, amen. And for us to have that, we must abide by the word of God. We must go and live according to the instructions that has been given to us, amen. Praise God. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to get into this. Amen. Praise be unto God. Second Timothy t- uh, chapter 3, it tells us a little bit about, you know, what the Bible is for us. That it has been written for a specific purpose. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. And so in the Amplified Bible, it reads that every scripture is God breathed. Every scripture, not just the Old Testament, the new too, and not just the new, but the old as well. Amen. That's why uh, God says you can't take an ad from my word. It is already written. You cannot take an ad. It's already been written and it's been inspired by me through my man of my men of God. Amen. And so further on in the Amplified Bible, it says, and it's profitable for instruction, for reproof and the conviction of sin. Amen. The word of God says the purpose for my word is for the correction of sin. Amen. And so I don't understand why we get so upset when we get corrected about our sin and we get offended. Amen. And we think that everybody mad at you and you walk out when the word is only doing what it has uh, fulfilling the purpose of what it's been called to do. And that is to correct us in our sin. Amen. If you disobey on your job, what do they take you back when you get written up? Because you did not do something that they have asked you to do repeatedly. So therefore you get corrected and you get written up. But I don't see you walking off from your job. Come on, come on. I don't I don't see you going off on your boss and getting all fly at the mouth with your boss. But you want to open up your mouth against the man of God that stands here. Amen. Is preaching the word of God in spirit and truth to help you correct those Aryan ways. So then you don't find yourself, Sister Linda, because I looked at you rolling. Amen. On roller skates to hell. Amen. He go, the word is to help us out. The word is to say, you know what? That's that's not right. That's not what you do. You do it this way. Amen. So don't be so offended when conviction comes. Amen. According to your Aryan ways, it's what the word is supposed to do. Amen. I say to God, I would rather be corrected and know it don't feel good. And so now I'll be wanting to cry like I'm three sometimes. Amen. And, and it does not feel good. But saints of God, I would rather be corrected than to uh, to be walking in error and knowing that what stands before me is destruction. Amen. I would rather be corrected. Amen. Pastor always uses the illustration when you're going down a wrong way, when it's a one way and you're going down the wrong way, you want to turn around. Amen. Because it's dangerous when you're going the wrong way. Amen. So the word of God is here to keep us, amen, going the right way. So it's the conviction of sin for correction of error and discipline in obedience. So the word of God brings us to a place of discipline, of obedience. Amen. And then it goes on, and for training in righteousness, in holy living, in conformity to God's will, in his thought, purpose, and action. I love that. The word of God, amen, it trains us in righteousness. So when they say, oh, you can't be perfect, but I'm in training. I may not pass level one yet, but I'm, I'm in training to get to level two. I'm working on it. Amen. I'm working to be in God's image. We're already create, created in the image and the likeness of God. That's how he created us. Amen. And as we heard through the men of God, when we were birthed, we were not birthed into sin. We learned sin. And because we have learned sin, we need to come back to the word of God that will correct us. Amen. From the sin and correct us from the lying way so that we can form our life back into the image of God as we were originally created. Amen. Say I'm in training and in training is in in a holy living conformity to God's will and thought. I love that, that the word of God will conform my mind to where I think like God. 
That's powerful. Just look at the creation. Look at how you breathe and look at how your body works together all at one time. My heart pumping blood through my body and telling my mind to talk, telling my hand to go up and down, telling my feet to walk all at the same time. What such a beautiful creation that God has made. And it came from his mind, from his thought, from a vision. He said we can have his thoughts if we would just conform to his word. Amen. And in purpose and in action. And then in verse 17, it goes on to say, so that the man of God may be complete and proficient and well fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Oh, give God a clap. Praise. Hallelujah. The word of God tells me that by his word, if I would take heed to the correction, amen, and keep myself aligned according to the word of God, amen, that I will complete a thing. I will be equipped for every work of God. So if he's called me to go out and witness, I'm equipped because of the word of God. When I'm on my job, I am equipped to open my mouth and to proclaim the gospel because of the word of God. Amen. I am equipped to glorify God. I am equipped to praise God. Amen. I am equipped to lift my hands. Amen. Holy hands unto the heavens and cry out holy unto my God. He has equipped me because of the word of God. Say the Bible. Hallelujah. It equips me for every good work. Amen. So whatever I need to do, if I can just go to the word, I know the word will equip me for every good work. Amen. I know that I can pray to God for wisdom. Lord, how do you do this? Lord God, show me how to do this according to your word. And because it is the word, he will equip me for every good work. Amen. In my notes, I have the Bible, which is the word of God. Number one is a God to eternal life. Hallelujah. If you want to put a title on the message this morning, it's a road map of eternal life. So the Bible, the word of God is a God to eternal life. Only by the word, saints of God, will you have eternal life in heaven. Let me clarify that. There's two types of eternal life. Hey, man, you can have eternal life in heaven with your father, your creator. Amen. Or you can have eternal life in hell and being tormented eternally, forever, non-stopping, no break time, no tapping out, all the time. Being tormented. Or you can be in heaven where there's no tapping out, there's no quit time, praising your God, walking on streets of gold, living in your mansion, crying out holy, holy, holy unto God, that you're in the presence of God, laying at his feet, amen, with the angels, amen, all the time. Now, there's only one that sounds good to me. Amen. Because I don't like to be tormented. I don't like to hit my toe on my bed. I don't like to burn myself with my curling iron. I don't like any type of pain. I don't like pain when I work out. I hate to be sore. It's pain. And then I'm all sore, and then he want me to do box jumps and stuff. I'm like, I can't do that. I'm sore. I'm in pain. I am not going to do that. Amen. But praise be unto God. So we don't like pain. So why would we live this life on this side thinking you having a good time and you all enjoy and you and you got a great life and oh I'm blessed. But Pastor said it yesterday, you're gonna go to heaven. Everybody is going to heaven. Everybody's like, oh praise God, praise God, yes, hallelujah. But are you gonna stay? Because you gotta go because you gotta meet your father. You gotta go because he's gonna tell you either come on in or I'm sorry, I never knew who you were. Who are you? Don't you hate that when you know somebody and you go up to them, you say, hey, girl, what's up, Sister Tasha? You like, and they just look at you like, who is this person? Don't you feel like, girl, don't you know me? You know me. You be trying to make them know you. Amen. And so you know how you feel when people don't recognize who you are? So, wow, I would hate to be in the position where I'm standing before God and God don't recognize who I am. Oh, glory to God. Amen. So. I need to keep myself in training. Amen. I sure wanted to quit doing them box jumps, but I know what I want to get to. So I know I got to keep myself in training. Amen. So the Bible, the word of God is a God to your eternal life. It is instructions to the truth. It's reproof for what is amiss. Hallelujah. Reproof, it means to simply to correct what is out of order. I remember pastor preached a message about being out of order. Amen. So when you are reproved, it is because you are being corrected what is out of order. A miss is out of the right or proper course. So you're going to be corrected on what is out of what is not right and what is an improper course. Amen. A miss also means out of order or condition. 
It's improper and it's wrong. Amen. So the word of God is going to correct us when we are not on the right course. When we are not living according to the word of God, the word is going to correct us. Number four, it also gives direction to that which is good. Amen. I remember a message again from pastor talking about the, the tree of life, the pathway to the tree of life. It will direct us in what is good. It's going to direct us to the blessed state of life. It's going to direct us to the fruit of God. It's going to direct us to prosperity. It's going to direct us to the joy and the peace. Amen. That we all desire. It's going to direct us. Amen. To have all that God is. The word of God is going to direct you in this life that you have painted. Everybody has this picture perfect life. And you can't have that in God. Amen. He said, I will give you the desires of your heart when you are diligently seeking after me. And what is diligently seeking after God? It's diligently seeking after his word. He says, when we meditate upon the word day and night, then we will have success. Why is that? I asked God, I said, so why do we have to meditate day and night to have success? Why, why the word? What, what in the word brings success? And he says, the word is my life. And if you are my child, you must imitate my life. You must imitate the word to have all that I am because everything good and perfect comes from the Lord. So every gift that I receive, it comes from the Lord. Amen. And so I have to know his word. I have to know who he is. I have to know my God. Amen. To receive of his life. I have to know what the word says. If I want his life, I got to know him. I got to know him. So how do you know God? By his word. You can't sit out there, see the sons, and be proclaiming a scripture when you don't know it. And my man of God gave me a powerful revelation. It's not what I have read and I can quote is what I know. Because we have a good mouth show. We're real good with our mouth. Amen. But what I obey is what is written in my heart. Or what's written in my heart is what I obey. And so what is in my heart and what I obey, amen, that's the word that I know. Not just because I have memorized it and can quote it, but are you living it? He said, daughter, you got to live this word. You can't witness and not live what you witnessing. But you got to be who I am at all times. If you are going to witness and be used by me, I need you to be who I am at all times. You can't just preach behind the pulpit and you can't just be a witness on your job and you're not living my word. So if you don't tell somebody that I have come to say to save them and to bring them into abundant life, I need you to be obedient so you can live an abundant life. If you're going to tell somebody not to sin, daughter, I need you not to sin. If you're going to tell somebody to read my word I need you to be reading my word if you're going to tell somebody you need to pray I need you to be praying when I tell you to pray he said don't be like the hypocrites because that is an enemy to me I don't like hypocrites I don't like it when you're lukewarm I'd rather have you cold than to be lukewarm God does not want us sometime in and sometime out he says dive deep into the water dive deep into my word and get all that I am I want you hot for me I want you on fire I want you full of the word but if you look warm I need you to get back to my word so I can put you back on fire I don't want you halfway in I don't want you sometime doing it I don't want you just on Sunday but I want you every day every moment that you wake every laying down at night everywhere that your feet tread upon I want you daughter I want you to praise me I want you to glorify me I want you to save my people I want you to be the living word I want you to be a witness I want you to be a testimony every day of your life so don't put on no mask daughter destroy the Dagon God knock it down destroy yourself because it is no longer you that lives my daughter it is my son that lives through you and I need you to deny yourself so my son can live through you oh God I never talked to y'all like that okay okay oh yeah real quick fast and in a hurry oh oh, oh, okay you're not gonna go pray oh you wanna sleep huh Okay, well, let me, let me, let me show you what sleep gets you, my daughter. Let me show you what not reading gets you. Let me show you about not praying. Let me show you what it gets you. Let me show you what disobedience brings to you. Let me show you when you neglect my word, what it brings to you. Sisters and wives, have you ever been so agitated with your family and agitated with your husband and you're just so irritated and everything getting on your nerves and I'm thinking it's everybody else that God said, no, that's you. 
you're not in my word like you should. You're not feeding the spirit on the inside of you. So that's why you're always acting out in your flesh because you're not feeding my spirit. I need you to get in the word. Feed my spirit. Stir up the gift that's on the inside. Saints of God, when you're not living in the word, when you're not meditating on the word, amen, you're not just giving power to the spirit, amen. You're not allowing the spirit on the inside to live through you. You are allowing your flesh to rule your body. Oh, if you're not in the word, you're not going to lean to the word. If you're not in the word, you're going to lean to your emotions. I said, God, I don't want to live in my emotions no more. I don't want to live up and down all the time. God, what do I need to do? Help me in this way. Help them, Lord God. Change my husband. Convict him. He said, oh, no. Oh, no, it's a work in you, my daughter. It's something I need to get out your heart. Amen. I need you to get deep down in, my, in the word and let me show you how to how to correct those things. Let me show you how to control your emotions. The fruit of my spirit is self-control. You're not working in the gift I have given you. You're not working in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He said, use all the gifts at all times. Every time you need it, you grab it, you use it. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, we've been there. We point at everybody else that they need to be corrected. We point at everybody else. Knowing we're not in the word like we're supposed to be. Knowing we're not praying like we're supposed to be. The Bible is our life. How can we call ourselves children of God when we don't apply ourselves to the word? How can we say we love God when we're not reading about God? How can we say, God, I have a relationship with you when I don't take time to spend with you? Amen. If you're going to get to know somebody, you got to spend time with them. Amen. I know you because I've spent time with you. I know God because I've spent time with him. God, I know you will supply my needs because I spent time time with him. I know you will deliver my family because I have spent time with you. I know that the baby is coming because I have spent time with you. I know the sanctuary will be filled because I have spent time with you. I know we will touch the world because I have spent time with you. I know we will fly by night, jet by day because I spent time with you. I know this is a multi-million dollar ministry because I have spent time with you. Because when I was spending time with you, you said, daughter, just speak it and it will be. Just call it what it is and it will be so call those things that are not as though they are and trust me lean not to your own understanding but acknowledge me in all your ways and watch me direct your path hallelujah he said watch me direct your path how you don't know which way to go say god I, i i acknowledge you in this situation i need you to direct my path and when he speak, and when the door shut, don't try to go find the key to open it. The door's been shut, so go through the other door that God got open. Hallelujah. Say the Bible. Hallelujah. The word of God, amen, is our life. It is the very being of God. Hallelujah. In my notes, I have the more we fully know the word of God, the doctrine of Christ, the more clearly we shall cleave to it. The more you know the word, saints, the more you want it. The more you want it. Pastor Ken said, what time you come to Bath? It's almost midnight. I couldn't get out of it. It was just so good to me. Amen. And God continues to speak and he can, can, continues to reveal things. So it's just so good. So why would you not want to go back and get some more? Oh, you went back and got you another hit. You went back and tipped up the bottle again because it was just feeling just so good, right? So when the word is good to you, how come you don't go back to the word? How come you don't stay steadfast in the word? And how come you don't just saturate yourself in the word because it's good? In the presence of the Lord, it is good, saints of God. Hallelujah. And so the reason many sit loose to it, the reason many are relaxed to the word of God, it is because they don't fully know or they don't they don't fully know or they reject the knowledge and the wisdom that comes from the word. Hosea chapter 4. Hallelujah. And so you're so relaxed from the word is because you don't know it. You don't know the word. That's why it's not important to you. That's why it's not a priority to you because you don't know the word. Or if you know the word, it's because you are rejecting what's coming from the word. 
You're rejecting the wisdom. You're rejecting the instruction. You're rejecting the correction. Meditate on 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, because it says the word is for correction. Amen. So don't reject correction. It's only coming from the word. It's only coming from the father that sees your future, that knows what's ahead of you. Amen. When you go and you and you got these doors and they say, choose a door, one, two or three. Amen. And so God knows what's on the other side of the door. So when he corrects you and says, don't choose number three, I need you to go through number one. Don't think you know the word better. Don't think you don't know what your pastor is talking about. You say, I'm just going to go through number two. I think that's better. And you go through number two, and it's not no good. You understand what I'm saying? You understand? Amen. So we need to allow God, amen, to correct us that we do not fall, amen, into, into destruction. Amen. He will keep us, amen, if we would just acknowledge him. Amen. So in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, amen, the word of God says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because they have rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget your children. Hallelujah. He said, okay, you're going to reject the word? You're going to reject my law? You're going to reject the wisdom? You're going to reject what's coming out? Okay, I'm going to reject you too. And not only you am I going to reject, but I'm going to reject your children. So saints of God, your lack of study in the word of God and your lack of meditation in the word of God will cause your children to suffer. Oh, yeah. When I wasn't in the word of God, I did, they did not want to be around me. When I wasn't praying and when I'm not meditating, you, you're not happy to be around when you're not in the presence of God. And when you're not in the word of God, you're not happy to be around because you're in your flesh. And the spirit does not want to dwell with flesh. Light and darkness don't comprehend one another. Satan and, and God don't sit together at the table. And so when you're ungodly, when you're in your flesh, it just grieves that person that is filled with the spirit of God. And they're like, you need to go pray. Now don't you tell me I need to go pray. You need to pray. You need to be fasting. Amen. You, you always want to go off on somebody. Just pass the tea. I be telling Pastor Kid, no, you go pray. And then you try to quote a scripture. You're the Levite of the house. You're the, you're the Lord of the house. You want me to call you Lord like Sarah did? You better be a Lord then. And then because he's a preacher, he come back with some word, and you go back with some word, and you just go back and forth with the word. Amen? Praise be God. And then you sit there like, we're sitting here arguing over the word. We're arguing about praying. Amen. Yeah, with the word. Amen. And, and oh no, you go pray. You pray. Let's pray. Okay. You know, have y'all have y'all ever been able to pray in anger? You be, Father, in the name of Jesus, I cast this. And you know, you be getting really deep into it. Amen. You you just so holy all of a sudden. Amen. In, in Jesus' name. Praise. I don't even know how I got there, but praise God. Amen. Not rejecting the word. Amen. So praise be unto God. Receive the word. Say, I receive. Amen. We don't want to reject the word, saints of God. That's how I got to. We're going to be ugly people. That's why we be some ugly people. Amen. We go out and we in the world and doing our secular things. And they be like, I thought you were saved. The other day, this lady was talking because I could hear it by my office. And she said something because I sent them a, an I message. She said, that doesn't come to us. That goes to the office manager. I said, pop, pop, pop. I was just typing a response because I reacted real quick in my flesh. God said, erase it. I said, dang it. And I just erased it. But I sure want to let her know, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. But I'm going to be a witness. I'm going to let you know. Hey, I can hear you. I know where to say. I worked in the lab before you did. You want to throw all that stuff up in her face. I, I know what to do. So there. The guy said, that's not, no, don't do that. And I said, okay, I'm going to be obedient. Amen. So according, in, in my notes, according to Hosea 4, 6, it says people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. This scripture makes the saying so true that when you know better, you do better. But there is also the rejection of the knowledge because you think you know better. Amen. Hallelujah. So, amen, you reject knowledge because you think you know better. That's going through door number two instead of going through door number one that was given to you. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the word of God says that the sword of the spirit that pierces our soul, mind, and heart is the word of God. Hey man, the sword, or that's, I'm sorry, that's in my notes, Hebrews 4, let's go there. But the sword of the spirit, amen, is the word of God. Getting ahead of myself, praise Jesus. And so, amen, for it to be destroyed, amen, the weapon, amen, is the word of God. 
Hallelujah. We use the word. Amen. It's been spoken to us many times that you speak the word. You speak what is written. For it is written. Jesus spoke against Satan. It is written. Amen. We continually speak the word of God. Amen. In every situation. Amen. Hebrews 4 verse 12. The word of God says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow. It is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Wow. That's why Pastor Nemo is discerning stuff. Amen. They filled with the word of God. And the word of God will discern your intentions. It will discern what's deep in your heart. Amen. So in my notes, praise be unto God, the sword of the spirit that pierces our soul, mind, and heart is the word of God. The word of God will cut off, number one, the ignorance from understanding. Because it's a sword of the spirit, so it will cut. Amen. It will cut the ignorance from understanding. Because confusion is not of God. Confusion is of the devil. Amen. Number two, it's re it will cut off rebellion from the will of man. Remember, uh, according to 2 Timothy, that the word of God gives us instructions. It keeps us in training of righteousness. And so it will keep us from rebellion. It will keep our will from rebellion. Number three, it is an enmity of the mind. The word will correct a carnal mind. To have a fleshly mind, amen, is an enmity to God. And so the word of God will cut your mind from thinking like according to your flesh, will keep you from having a carnal mind. The word of God will cut, number four, the lust of your flesh. The word will make you undergo the most sharpest operation to mortify the flesh, amen. So the word of God will make you go and, and really search yourself. I heard Sister Ginger's testimony. She said, when Pastor was reading that, I found myself in that. So the word will reveal what's on the inside of you to make you undergo a change, to make you undergo a transformation, to make you undergo a renewing your mind and renewing who you are to bring you into the place of where you are with God, back into his image and back into his likeness and put you back on the right path. The word of God corrects us and keeps us on the right path. Amen. And so, amen, the word will turn the inside of you out and reveal what's in your heart. Hallelujah. It will turn you, it will turn the inside of you out and reveal what's in your heart. I remember one time Pastor said, God just need to flip us upside down and let everything pour out that's not like him. Amen. So the word of God will reveal what's on the inside. And when God had given me that, I remember I was sitting probably over here in this section. I remember Pastor was preaching the word. I felt like I was in a boxing ring with God. It was like, poof, poof, poof. I was just on every side, on every corner. I said, okay, I hear you loud and clear. Hallelujah. Amen. The word, it will just, it will correct you, saints of God. And praise be unto God that we do have something that will keep us in line with God. Amen. I don't want to, I don't want God angry at me. I don't want God disappointed with me. I don't want God displeased with what I do. Amen. I want to be on the right side. Amen. I want to be on God's good side. Amen. I don't want to be living contrary to my father. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I want to live according to his will that I can please him so that when I do stand before him, he says, come on in, my good and faithful servant. It will be a shame that you live on this side in your own way, in your own thinking, according to your own will and think you're going to enter into heaven. When you're doing your own thing, when God is not priority, when God is not of importance, nor of his word is important. But you think that you can do your own thing and enter into heaven. You think that you can come on Sunday and praise God, but you go hang out with your friends tomorrow and you cussing and being disobedient and you go into the club and you're not presenting your body holy that's acceptable and pleasing unto God, but you're presenting your body like you a heathen. You sipping on some wine. Oh, I'm just going to hit it just this one time. Oh, just one more time. I just need one more little hit. Just this one time. You go back to what you used to do. But when the word of God clearly says it is for correction. So I don't understand why we come into the house of God. Think that we can sit without correction and be who we are five years ago. You're still the same person. You are rejecting the word of God. You are rejecting the knowledge of God. If you are the same person that you were when you came into this house five years ago. Because of the power that's, that's in this house and because of the spirit of God that dwells in this house. If you've been here for two weeks and you ain't changed, you're rejecting the word. 
We can even go even deeper and say a service. Hallelujah. It took one word. Come. Help. One word. Rise up. One word. It takes one word to change your situation. One day with the Lord is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day with God. So when the doors are open, I can't miss that one day. Because that one day may be my thousand year blessing. That one day may be the word that just changes everything around. That one word may be what it takes to save my family. That one word may be what I need to walk in the blessings of God. That one word may be my healing. I don't understand when you have a need that you don't come to the house of God. I don't understand if you seek it and you crying out to God for a deliverance. You don't plant yourself in the house of God. But you think and you listen to the lie of the devil. Oh, I can miss today. You better not miss not one word. Our man of God has spoken over the next year that you better have the word of God in your spirit. Amen. And like uh, the word said or the, the spirit of God said that it's not what you read that you obey. And what you obey is what's in your heart. Saints of God, Pastor has spoken. I believe it. He has never been wrong when he has prophesied about the next year. You better get some word in your spirit. You want God to deliver you from a sickness and disease, but you don't plant yourself. You want God to change your bank account, but you don't plant yourself. You want God to save your family and keep your daughters from off the streets, amen, presenting their bodies unholy unto people, but you don't plant yourself. You want your children to come out of rebellion, but you don't plant yourself. You want to be prosperous and successful, but you don't plant yourself. You want to have all the things in the world and the finest cars and the biggest house and all the jewelry and all the diamonds but you don't plant yourself what makes you think that God the creator of this world is going to give you anything of his when you're in disobedience right. say it don't happen that way it don't happen hallelujah in Psalms 119 verse 9 so the word is sharper than a two edged sword amen it makes us undergo the most sharpest operation to kill our flesh so you find yourself in your flesh, get to the word. You find yourself wanting to indulge in fleshly desires, get to the word. Amen. When I was first delivered from cigarettes, I would have a craving, you know. I would want to smoke again because it was a habit. So when I would get up, I would smoke or after meals, I would smoke. And so when God delivered me, that temptation would come back. Because how many know the devil only uses the old tricks? Hey man, to see, he, he gonna come test the house and see if it's cleaned up. Hey man, and so, hey man, I would have that temptation, hey amen, to smoke again, but I knew that it would displease God. I knew that I would be disobedient. Hey amen, and, and I knew that, okay, I'm being tempted, I need to get in the Word, I need to find some strength. I need to find where it says I am an overcomer. I need to find that you can do all things through Christ. The people I work out with, they think I'm crazy. Because when it comes to a, ta a challenge, I say, I can do all things through Christ. I can do this, 10. I got this in Christ. Lord God, give me. I'll be, I be speaking the word. they be looking at me like, um, yes, because I need Jesus so I don't fall on this. Amen. Y'all, I'm, I'm afraid of box jumps. Anybody? I mean, they just, it's scary. Amen. You got to see, you got to make sure you get your feet off that ground. If not, you're going to be tumbling over some boxes. Amen. And then they want you to do like 20 of them. I'm like, really, 20? How about five? Amen. And then your legs are already sore, so you really ain't got no strength. But I know that if I call upon my God, that he would give me the desires of my heart. And I said, God, I want to I wanna accomplish this. I want victory in this. Amen. So he gives me the ability to do it, and I've done it. Amen. I come home excited. I'm like, I did it today. I'll be talking to kids. I did it today. Amen. Because it's an accomplishment. God cares about every little thing that we care about. Everything that you care about, God cares about. He says, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. Amen. So saints of God, we have to allow the word of God to bring us into a place to undergo construction. Let's say that. That we undergo some construction. Amen. So in Psalms 119 verse 9, uh, you can notate in your, in your notes and out of the Amplified Bible it says, A man is cleansed of his ways by conforming to the word. Conforming to the word. So you are cleansed of your old nature by conforming to the word. As we know, according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that the word of God gives us instructions by the truth to direct us on the path of eternal life. 
Hallelujah. We are instructed by truth, not by opinion, according to the word of God. And that will direct us to the path of eternal life. And Proverbs 3, verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Amen. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 8. Hallelujah. Say the word of God. God. Hallelujah. It's important, saints of God. Amen. It's not something that we can just throw to the side, amen, and and neglect, but it is our very life. It is what we need, amen, to to keep on the the path of the straight and narrow. It's through the word of God. I don't want to be where it's easy. That's what the revelation that came to me. That the path that is wide that everybody's on is because it's easy. But that straight and narrow, it's narrow. So you, you know, it, you, you gotta get in there. Amen. I wanna be on the narrow path. I wanna walk with God. And I wanna be on the path that I will see my father and I will stay with my father. Amen. Can you just imagine, amen, in heaven with your God? Oh, y'all don't. Okay, I do. Amen. Cause that's excitement. That you among God all day. Never stopping in his presence. Amen. Glory to God. In Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17 it says, I love them that love me. And those that seek me early shall find me. That's the word that God gave to me about getting up in the morning. I said, okay. Amen. So I love them that love me and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yes, than fine gold and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness. Say I'm in training. In the midst of the path of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. It says I love them that love me. And if you'll read that whole chapter, it's talking about wisdom. So the Bible, the word, which is the wisdom of God, wisdom was with God in the beginning. Before the foundations of the earth were ever created, wisdom was with God. Hallelujah. It says uh, wisdom, the word of God, abided and it dwelt with God. Amen. Uh, scripture is John chapter 1 verse 1. Amen. Notated it. Uh, in John chapter 1 verse 1 it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's in verse 4. So in the word is life, and the word shall shine forth of the light in men. The light that is given through the word of God will dismantle all forms of darkness. Hallelujah. So wisdom was with God in the very beginning. And we know that God was in the beginning and the word was with God. And so wisdom is the word of God. And the word of God was with God in the beginning. And in verse 4 it says that the word of God is life unto men. And it is light unto men. Amen. And then in my notes I have darkness can never overpower the light of men. That are lit by the life of the word of God. The word came to the, to the world and it dwelt in its own creation. And the creation rejected the creator. But to those who received of the word was given and is given the authority that is carried out in the word. If you'll read John chapter 1, all this comes from John chapter 1, that they rejected the word. Amen. They did not receive of the word. The world did not receive of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the word because he says that the word became flesh. Amen. And the word became Jesus. Jesus is the word. Amen. And so when Jesus came back to the world, the, the, the word came back to its own creation because the word was in the beginning with God. When God began to create the world, the word was with him. Amen. There's also a scripture that says, amen that wisdom was with God before the foundations were even created that it says I wisdom was with God amen and so in my notes I have so what makes us think that we don't need to dwell with wisdom if God dwelt with wisdom in the beginning and God abided with wisdom in the beginning what makes us think that we don't need to dwell with wisdom amen through knowing and gaining understanding of the Bible the word of God you will gain riches and honor You will walk in the way of righteousness. You will inherit substance. I love that. It says if you will love me, amen, the word of God says that you will, your treasures will be filled. You will inherit substance when you love the word of God. Number four, overflow of treasures. You will find life and you will find favor of God. Blessed are the ones that seek after the word of God. When I walk according to the word of God, I shall not stumble. I must give our, we must give our ears over to hear of wisdom and allow our heart to produce understanding. What we hear and obey is what is in our heart and we will produce the fruit of the word for the world to see. 
We must seek after wisdom like you seek after money. Not realizing that as you seek after money, you're losing the wisdom that will make you rich with no sorrow. But wealth without the wisdom of God brings nothing but unhappiness. Matthew 6, it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will add all these things unto you. Heaven and earth will pass away, so all material gain will perish, but it is the word that will ever remain. And as stated earlier in my notes, many people are relaxed from the Bible because they just don't know they reject it or they feel they have no need of it. But calling yourself a believer of God and rejecting his word is as rebellion and disobedience for God is his word. So if you are rejecting the word, you might as well be rejecting your God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 20 as I close. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise be unto God. The word is important. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 20. I'm going to read at verse 7. It says, O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocked me. For since I spoke, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me. And a derision daily. So here it is, Jeremiah said, ever since I've been speaking your word, trouble is coming. Ever since I didn't open up my mouth about your word, I, I just feel derision coming daily. Obstacles are coming to me daily when I began to speak your word. And then in verse 9, then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak, of, uh, nor speak any more in his name. Huh. God, I ain't going to read your word no more. I ain't going to tell nobody about your word no more. You didn't sit there and you didn't give me what I wanted. You didn't answer my prayer when I thought you was going to. You didn't save my brother. So I'm, I'm just not even going to go to the house of God no more. I'm not going to go hear you talk. And then further on it says, but his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. Hallelujah. Verse 9 out of the Amplified, it says, If I say I will not make mention of the Lord or speak any more in his name, in my mind and in my heart, it, has, it is as if there was a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary of enduring and holding it in. I cannot contain it any longer. He said, oh, when I wanted to do away with you, God, I couldn't. Because that word was burning in my heart. That word was burning in my spirit. When I didn't want to come to your house no more, there was something on the inside of me that had me burning to come to the house. There's something on the inside that keeps me burning, seeking your face. There is something on the inside that keeps me burning after you, Lord God. I want to know all that you are, all that you are to me. I want to know, God, there is something on the inside that keeps you from failing. It's like a burning shut up in my bones that I can't stop talking about the word of God. That's when you're around, Pastor. It's nothing but the word. Nothing but the word. When you're around the woman of God, it's nothing but the word because there's something on the inside that keeps burning on the inside filled with the word. The word of God said it's sharper than a two-edged sword going down even into your marrow. It is in your bones. That's why the word is health to your bones. That's why if you got them aches and them arthritis and all that kind of stuff, it's the word you need to put in your bones. It needs to be like a burning fire. He said, I can't even contain it. It's burning so much, I got to go speak. I repent, God, being paraphrased. I repent because I said I would not speak of you again and I would not come to your house again. I repent because it's burning on the inside. I just got to go tell somebody. I need to tell somebody what you done for me. I need to tell somebody how you delivered me from cocaine. I need to tell somebody that you can make it. I need to tell somebody that you don't need no man. I need to tell somebody that if you will seek God for First, he will add everything to you. I need to go tell somebody about your word because it's just burning on the inside of me. He said, I can't contain it on the inside. Amen. That's why you see people taking off running because it's that spirit on the inside. It's the word that's on the inside that has you burning on the inside. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Ha. Praise be unto God. Give God a clap praise this morning. Saints of God, the Bible, the word of God, and the wisdom of the word is necessary. 
It is necessary. Amen. It is for our correction. It is for our instruction. It is to keep us on the path. Amen. Of righteousness. Amen. Stand to your feet this evening. Give God a clap praise as you do for his word. Amen. And most importantly, what 2 Timothy says, that every scripture is given by God. Every scripture has been breathed by God. It is God that spoke to give your tithes. It is God that spoke to do not fornicate. It is God that spoke and said, do not, amen, partake in sin. Come out from among them. Do not dwell together with unbelievers. Come out, separate yourselves. It is God that spoke that. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are here this morning and the word of God has touched you, amen, you feel that the word has touched you to correct you in a situation, amen, I'm here to come into agreement, amen. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ or if you need to come back, amen, the, the Lord is here, the spirit of the God is here to welcome you back, amen. Don't be, don't be prideful and or don't be ashamed and don't listen to the lie of the devil that says, oh, you don't need to. You okay where you at? You okay. You don't need, it's not necessary to go to the altar. Amen. And you can build an altar right there where you at. But when two or three touch and agree in the name of Jesus, one can put a thousand to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight. I would rather come into agreement with somebody to help me put all of them to flight. Amen. So if that's you this morning, I welcome you to the altar. If you say, Pastor T, the, the word has not been important to me. I just don't have a hunger for the word anymore. I just don't see the necessary need of me seeking the word. And I don't, I don't have a desire. I don't want to read the word. If that's you, I welcome you to the altar. And saints of God, we can stand out there like we read the word, but I guarantee you, we don't read the word like we need to. Not like we need to. It says meditate day and night. Hallelujah. God is here to help us. Like Jeremiah said, it's like a fire on the inside of me. God is here to place the fire for his word on the inside of you, saints of God, so that we can live our life according to the word of God. David said, write your word upon my heart so I sin not against you. Hallelujah. The word will kill the flesh. The word will kill the flesh and the fleshly desires by living and abiding in the word of God. Hey Amen. Give God a clap. Praise. Amen. Just worship God where you at. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints of God. Be obedient to the word. Sister Liz, you need to get up and get on the altar. Sister Liz, you need to get up and get on the altar. She called people to the altar. If you need God to deliver you, be obedient to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, everybody. Amen. You don't study your word. You don't know the word. The word is not alive on the inside of you. If that's you, you need to come on and come to the altar. Those of you that are on streaming right now and you know that you don't have the word like you should have the word, and the word is what's going to keep us. It's going to get us there. It's going to keep us there. Where you are, just lift up and receive what's going off on this altar right now. Amen? Saints of God, the number one thing that we need to do is be obedient to the word of God. We can't do things the way that we want to. Remember the story about the man that God said, don't touch, don't touch that ark. But the donkey kind of like moved a little bit and the ark was about to fall. And that man put his hand on the ark to do God a, to do God a favor. And God struck him dead because he thought, because he didn't have a good enough relationship with God to understand, amen, what God wanted. He thought he was helping God out. Let the music down a little bit, Brother Eddie. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Because somebody need to hear the word today and somebody need to hear the word on obedience. Over here, son. Go down here on the end. Don't crowd up in one little spot. Because, honey, when you go before Jesus Christ, your dad ain't going with you. Did you know that? Has anybody told you that? Well, I'm telling you today, you go all by yourself. Your dad don't go with you. Your relationship with Christ has to be your relationship with Christ, not based on the relationship with your dad. 
And I know you love the Lord. And I know you love the word of God. So go ahead and lift your hands and receive right now. In your heart. Don't be there just to be there. Get that purpose in your heart and in your spirit as to why I'm here this morning, Lord. There are some more people that are standing out here. And you think, well, I don't want to go because I don't want people to know that I don't read the Bible. Well, we, guess what? We already know you don't. <laughs> you go like, golly, co-pastor, you so cold. No, I'm just a watchman on the wall that's not afraid. Your stiff head, your stiff neck don't scare me. Amen. It vexes my spirit, but it doesn't scare me. Amen. If you come in to receive, baby, unfold your arms and receive. Don't come up here thinking that God owe you nothing because God don't owe you nothing. But he's ready to give you something. Go ahead and receive today, Sonia. Receive today. God been talking to you. He been talking to you. He been talking to you. And you just in resistance and you saying, well, the rest of them ain't doing it. I ain't got to do it either. But just like I told brother man right here, you're going to stand before God for you. You're not going to stand before God for the rest of your family. They're not going to stand before God for you. Just receive it today in the name. Do you love him? Do you really and truly love him? Do you want to be obedient to him? Well, just be. That's all you got to do, baby, It's just be. When the decision to make a godly decision come to you, make the godly decision. It's not painful. Go ahead and say, Lord, I surrender. It's not painful. It doesn't hurt to obey God. Why in the world would God make something painful that he's offering to you? He offering it to you for an abundant life. He's not offering it to you so that he can hurt you. But the first thing that you got to do, sons of God, first thing you got to do is learn how to be obedient to God. When God is speaking to your heart like he's speaking to your heart right now, be obedient to God. Don't say, I don't know if that's God talking or not. Well, who do you think it is? Do you really think that it's the devil telling you to go to the altar? Never. The devil is never going to tell you to go to the altar. The devil is never going to tell you to come to church. The devil is never ever going to tell you to surrender your heart to the Lord. The devil is not going to do it, streaming audience. They're not going to tell you, go ahead and, and, and flip on that stream in that crazy church over there. Go ahead and flip it on that because that church is telling me the truth. I got to hear the truth and I got to receive the truth in order to have my blessing, Sister Michelle. You got to receive the truth and you got to walk in it. How many know just knowing the truth is not going to do you any good? <laughs> not know. I mean, you know, if they said that it's a straight shot from here to Market Street on Quaker. Amen. If you never get on that street and go straight down uh, Martha Sharp to Quaker, how many know you're not going to ever get there? So just knowing the directions don't make it don't make you blessed what makes you blessed is when you're obedient to the word and the word is important to you the word is important i can't stop serving god because if i do that people gonna talk about me do we not just read what jeremiah said he said they mocking me Every time I open up my mouth, it's just like I'm trying to beat people up and they're mocking me. I keep talking about I prophesy and I prophesy violence and all kinds of stuff coming up on them. And then they mock me. I'm just going to shut my mouth and I'm not going to say another thing because they talk about me. I don't care what you say about me. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. God wants his people blessed. And God wants his people saved. And somebody got to tell somebody the truth. Yes. Lord knows he put a stop on my mouth because a lot of stuff I wanted to say was just pure flesh. It was the truth, but it was flesh. And I wanted to say it. And I'm like, Sister T, he said, erase. I said, oh, man. Come on, Lord. Let me say it just one time. He said, no, I ain't going to let you. I'm not, not, I'm not going to let you kill the people. But I will give it to you in a reconstructed way so that they can live. I'll give it to you in a reconstructed way so they can live. That's how good God is. Because he knows if your flesh, who you love so much, gets wounded, you might not ever hear the word of God again. But he has a rebuilding for the flesh. And it's the word. 
You ain't got it all. Father God, I pray for those that are still in their seats today. I pray for them right where they are, Father God. As the woman of God told them, worship God right where they are. Worship God right where you are. If you feel like you have enough of the word that lives on the inside of your heart, amen, that lives in your spirit, Amen. You ought to give God some praise. It ought to be going up like a volcano in here. For those that are still at your seat, you ought to be giving God awesome praise. Awesome praise because he done filled you with his word. He has filled you with a desire, amen, a fire to be in his word on a consistent basis. Oh, that's not you. Well, you need to be at the altar then. How often do you pick your Bible up and open it and read it? Oh, oh, you need to be at the altar. <laughs> this message was for you. Yes, it was. How often do you study the word? See, you might pick your Bible up <laughs> and read a scripture and put it down and call yourself meditating. But how often do you really study the word? How often do you diligently seek after God in his word? Jesus told those Pharisees, he said, what you looking for is standing in front of you today. He said, what you looking for? I am he. That's what Jesus told the Pharisees. He said, you looking for all that stuff down off in the word. You know, you're looking for the codes and stuff. You don't need a code. I'm standing right here. He is real right here. He's right here. And if you don't study your Bible on a daily basis, if that word is not being instilled by you, into your spirit on a daily basis you just need to say Lord give me a hunger give me a fire I need a hunger Lord God I make excuses Lord how many excuse makers are in the house I was that way I was that way too oh well I'm gonna give myself a rest today I'm gonna give myself a rest today I read enough yesterday <laughs> I'm gonna give myself a rest today you never have enough you know what you don't have enough weapon on the inside of you to give yourself a rest today don't give yourself a rest today. Never, not one day that God gives you breath are you not to open up your word and diligently seek after the Lord. Don't just read a scripture. Seek the Lord for yourself. And some of that laziness will go away from you. Some of that anger will come out of your heart. Some of that mistrust will get out of your heart. Some of that don't care whether people are mocking me or not will come out of your heart. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come in and get active in your life. And then somebody will be led to Christ just because of your life. Just because of your life. Serving God is not hard. You make it hard. I said serving God is not hard. You make it hard. Because you don't want to be obedient. <laughs> you can't rewrite the word to make it fit you. You cannot rewrite the word to make it fit your life. No, God, yeah, God sure do know your heart. And you should not use that for an excuse. Because he know your heart better than you know your heart. Yes, Lord. Somebody just need to say yes, Lord. Every excuse I've made, Lord God, tear it down, Father God. Every day gun that I have set up in my life, Lord God, tear it down right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody just need to say in your heart, tear down the day guns in my life, Lord. Tear down the day guns. If you all of that, you ought to be on every team that's in this church. Because you know enough that you're stuffed up that you need a release. <laughs> I, I said you need a release. You need to be on the evangelist team. You need to be on the street team. You need to be on the prison team. You need to be on the jail team. You need to be on every team. You need to be teaching something. You need to teach Sunday school. You need to be in the choir. You need to be in something. If you all of that in Christ, you got all of that on the inside of you, what you got it on the inside of you for? There is no fruit that's ever fed a tree. There is no fruit that has ever fed, its, uh, fed a tree. That tree produces fruit so somebody else can eat off of it. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Mock me all day long if you want to. It's all right. I don't care. Because somebody is going to be saved, set free, and going to heaven. The throne of heaven will be enthroned with the true worshipers of God. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there anybody in the house? Pastor prayed for Bibles the other day. Is there anybody in the house that did not get their Bibles prayed for? Anybody in the house that didn't get their Bibles prayed for? If I you know, in, uh, you you that didn't wasn't at the altar when I prayed uh, Sunday night, was it? I can't remember, Pastor. When I told you to bring your Bibles in your hand, I'm gonna pray that God, when you open it, God will give you a desire to stay in it. And uh, when you open it, you get understanding from it. Most people worry with God's word because they say they don't understand it. The reason why you don't understand it is because you don't receive it. See, the Bible is not for your flesh. It's for your spirit. Once God can get you to read and obey his word by his spirit, then your flesh falls in submission. Wow. And most people never do read the Bible because it's a worry to their flesh. But it don't, it don't answer the flesh and its desires right. So it put the Bible to the side. But I believe that if I pray and agree with you about your Bible, that when you open it up, God going to show you wonderful things. Thank you, Lord. And I believe you'll get to reading that Bible until you can't put it down. Thank you, Lord. Because that's the way God did me. Amen. And I have not put the Bible down since. Help us, Father. I was staying in the Bible all night long because he gave me such a hunger. And not only because of the hunger, but it made sense to me. Amen. As I was reading, God was talking to me. So if I didn't get to bless your Bible, uh, the one you read, you need to get a good Bible that you can read. And I, I, I said Tuesday night, at the back of your Bible, there's a concordant. And the concordant is like an index that gives you a, if you've got a subject that you need to pray in the back of that Bible, it'll show you where prayer at. Now, a lot of scriptures is in the back of that Bible that you can pull out and start reading about prayer. Amen. If you need healing at the back, you get a Bible with a concordant on it. If you need healing, you go back there and you can find scriptures in healing. And when you find those scriptures in healing, you read every one of those scriptures based on your healing. Because that's how God going to heal you. Most people don't know how to study the Bible. Amen. If it's money you need, Get your Bible with a concordant on the back there. When you flip it back there, it'll say finance. It'll say money back there. That's many scriptures that talk about money and talk about God. If it's about someone being saved, everything is in the Bible. Amen. You just got to know how to navigate through the Bible. And I believe that God will give you answers. This is why we're preaching about the Bible, because we want to get you back to where God is at. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And learn how to love reading the Bible. Most people just don't read the Bible and then they guess at life and have opinionated by life. And therefore, they don't think life works when we read in the Bible. Amen. But when you read and you hear me preach, you'll say, wow, I read that. I just read that. It's in the Bible. Amen. Because if you read it, you're going to hear somebody preach it. God confirming something you read. And it'll work in your life. It's going to tear down your way of thinking. It'll tear down your errant thinking. It'll tear down the thoughts that you have, have been planning in your mind that what somebody else said. Amen. Correction come. Amen. On how to look at God. The main thing about scripture, don't try to look in scripture for your deliverance. Don't look in scripture, search the scriptures for yourself. You search the scriptures for God. Thank you, Lord. That's why you search the script, you search the scripture for God, not yourself. Jesus said, "If you when you search the script, you might be searching for yourself. But he said, you search the script, you're going to find out they're talking about me. I learned that I need to know what God think about the situation. I learned, amen, that I need to know how human think about a situation. Then I learned how I need to know about the results in behind it. That's how I studied God's Bible. Know what God can do, know what human can do, and know the results in behind it. And it has work, and it's still working, and it's real, and it's deliverance. So you don't have to walk no more as a Christian by what somebody else say. You don't have to go buy somebody else's book to know God. Because he's written his own book. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Most people spend time by what somebody else said when I need to spend time to see what God said. 
When I do that, my God, and if you do it, listen, you can go through that, but you can read that whole Bible. It's very important. This, this book is so powerful. It's got, you ain't looked at a love story greater than this one. This whole book is about relationship. It's about love. It's about people. It's about family. It's about God. Amen. It's about life. I will you, I get one. And I make it my reason. I make it my purpose. And I'll put my initial on it. Say, this is my Bible. I will sleep with it. I'll put it under my pillow. I will carry it with me everywhere I go until it starts carrying itself on the inside of you. Amen. So if you got a Bible, I didn't pray for your Bible. Bring your Bible up here and yourself. We're going to pray that God bless it and bless you too so you can start reading your Bible. Amen. This is your special Bible. This is the one that you're going to be reading all the time. Amen. Okay, give me that anointing, all, please, Pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, years ago, people taught me in the Baptist church. I'm a Baptist. I'm a born again Baptist, full of the Holy Ghost. And uh, they told me not to read Revelation. Say, anybody read Revelation, they go crazy. I said, well, what in the world God put revelation on this book for then? If he didn't want me to read it. They didn't want to read because they were scared of it and they didn't have no understanding. Because the Holy Spirit now, then you ain't going to understand the scriptures. But the Holy Ghost filled me and gave me revelation of that. Hallelujah. Amen. I got insight of the Bible like no other. Hallelujah. Not no human can give you. Amen. But what the Holy Ghost has revealed. And I read that Bible. Because that's the Holy Spirit inside making me, amen, want God. Hallelujah. Lift it up before God. God, I give back your word to you. Just like they handed Jesus the book, as he said in Luke chapter eight, 4, 18, they handed him the scriptures, Isaiah. He opened that scripture and began to read it. Then they gave it back. Jesus gave it back to him, bless, fulfill. God, they hand your word back to you in Jesus' name. And as I trust their Bible, Lord God, you give it back to them fulfilled. That they'll get understanding when they read that word. In Jesus' mighty name, I anoint that word with life fulfilled. As Jesus gave it back to them, it was fulfilled. He said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your presence. God, I thank you for this scripture. These scriptures are fulfilled in their presence. I thank you for these scriptures being fulfilled in their presence. I thank you, God, for these scriptures. Don't let religious talk you out of God. I don't. You heard me. Don't hear the voice of religion. You see your, your papa? That's religion. This is real. Father in Jesus, don't listen to religion. Father in Jesus' name, I give you praise and I give you glory right now. This scripture is fulfilled in his presence. Father, I give you praise. I give you glory right now. You're going to preach like me. Look at me. You got my spirit in you. And you're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ just like you see your granddaddy do. This day, God, this script is fulfilled. As she read this scripture, we'll be fulfilled in her presence. I thank you, Lord God, this day, Lord God, in Jesus' name, as he read this Bible, these scriptures are fulfilled in his presence. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. As he reads your word, Father God, that you give him back to him fulfilled in his presence. And Jesus said, yes, it is. Yes, it is. He told me to tell y'all, amen, that these scriptures are fulfilled. He giving it back to you fulfilled. Hallelujah. <laughs> Whoo, hallelujah. God, I thank you that these scriptures are fulfilled. My God, the anointed hands that's holding this Bible. That's cost the Bible in the hand. I thank you for it now, God, that these scriptures are fulfilled in her presence. In Jesus' name, Father. I thank you, Lord God, that your scriptures are fulfilled in his presence. My hallelujah. God, anointed hands, holy anointed Bible. Anointed Bible in anointed hand. Woo. God, I thank you, Lord, that this day these scriptures are fulfilled in his presence. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we give you glory and praise for it right now. Amen, amen. There's going to be a Lord. light shine. There's going to be a light Lord. shine up on those Bibles. Wow. You have a greater light when you look at that word. It's going to be enlightening your understanding, yeah. enlightening your reason, enlightening your sight. Amen. God bless you. Wow, your house is going to be illuminated. Amen. 
with seriousness. I see seriousness in it. Amen. And get ready for increase. When you see seriousness in that like that, when, when everybody is reading their Bible and everybody is being obedient to the word of God, watch the miraculous happen. Amen. There's not anything too big for God. Not a thing. Brothers, little brothers, there's nothing too big for God. Whatever you think about, amen, God can bring about. Ephesians 3.20 said, you know, that it, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all the things, Sister Jerrica, that you can ask, think, or imagine. When you are obedient to that word of God, when you're a child after God's own heart, you're obedient to your parents. And no matter what people say about you or to you, your parents and in, in obedience to God uh, towards your parents is always first. You will have everything that you ever wanted. Y'all have that big old house out there on that land where y'all can go play football, basketball, swim in your own pool, wear whatever color shoes you want to wear. Amen. Sister Jerrica, how the kind of hair you want when you want it. Amen. You know, and you say, co-pastor, you think of talking about a lot of material things, but you know what? That's what God does. That's what God does. He opens up the window of heaven to Samaria and pours us out blessings so huge that we cannot contain it. But when you allow uh, Brother Cleveland, Sister Cleveland, when you allow your children to be disobedient and run your house, you will reap the rewards of it. And I know neither one of y'all are not like that. We pulled up on Sister Lamanda one day. She was swinging at Sister Jerrica so hard. I said, hey, hey, I did, Sister Mary. She was swinging at Jerrica's head, but Jerrica was ducking and dodging. She wasn't hitting. She didn't hit Jerrica, but she showed us at her. And Pastor said, what's the matter, sis? And Sister started crying. Ooh, she was just wailing, wailing. And we talked to little Sister Jerrica. Shoot, Sister Jerrica was glad to get out that car, wasn't you, that day, Sister Jerrica? So your mama was fixing to whoop you. She was going, I, I mean, y'all, Sister Lamanda was swinging at that girl's head so hard. She said, you just don't know, co-pastor, you just don't know. I was going, but you know what? But you know, the obedience of the word overcomes all of that. And, you know, I, I'll say this, and I'm not apologizing for the time, but we were late this morning, and so it's after 2 o'clock right now. But that's okay. Amen. Uh, you know, it's not always this way. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I just thank the Lord for you. God bless you. Don't live. Don't live in religion, saints of God. Let religion go. It don't matter what mom and them always did. It don't care. I don't care what big mom and them did. It don't make a bit of a difference. If it's not in the word of God, it accounts for nothing. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Love to read your Bible and be ready to obey it when you read it and watch God do the miraculous in your life. I heard Pastor thanking everybody for yesterday. I want to thank you again. I thanked you all day long yesterday, but I'll say it again. Amen. And so thank you. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit was there, and he really and truly did. Uh, uh, he did minister, and people were really blessed. Hallelujah. My sister, was, I mean my sister, <clears throat> my sister was blessed, but uh, if she was still here, she would have been blessed, but my other sister was blessed, amen. Uh, but my niece was very blessed, and she was be very pleased, amen. Glory to God, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, in Jesus' name. We'll be back tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, Pastor, uh, Associate Pastor Michael Hay will be in the in the pulpit, bringing the word tonight. You don't want to forget it. Amen. Preaching about the Bible. Uh, I challenge everybody that's in here tonight, uh, in here today, come back tonight and bring somebody with you. Who's going to accept the challenge? Amen. Okay, and the rest of y'all, anyway, what you going to do with the rest of it? Amen. I had two people that was going to invite some people. What's up with that? What's up with that? No, they're coming back to get stuffed. Amen. I'm saying I'm going to tell you this and then I'm going to dismiss. You know what? You come to church every Sunday. It's not what God wants. He wants you to come to church, but he wants you to spread it. Oh, I be I be witnessing at my job. Where they at? It's not effective. See, we do a lot of things, but it's not effective. Do you know why we do it? And it's not effective because it's not God. Did you just hear what I said about Urias and trying to hold that cart up? And you would have thought that God would have said, yay, he stopped the, the ark of God from falling to the ground. But God killed him instantaneously there. Everything that is good is not God. 
Amen. We're going to go in Jesus name. You know what? If you witness and you and you get on the phone and spend more time on the phone than you do trying to eat and trying to look at a football or basketball game. Amen. To build the kingdom of God. People will come to the house of God. If you will show them that you are blessed, they'll come and see how you got your blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Get a copy of the CD. It is worth hearing again in Jesus name. I will be back tonight. Hope to see y'all. If we don't, we'll still be here. Hope you do read that. Find that scripture that Sister T said about wisdom. I found it. I want you to find it. Because when you get wisdom. Amen. You're going to be blessed in Jesus name. Father, we bless you. We keep, ask that you would keep us as we bring this service to a close, Lord God. But of course, your presence never. In Jesus name, we bring, ask you bring us back tonight with your unspeakable and full of glory. And we all said, God bless you. You are blessed when you're obedient to the word. you to know that we care for you, we love you, we can encourage your family to a greater place in life. You can join us uh, if you need our address here in Lubbock, Texas, 7302 Upland Avenue. Uh, we encourage you to come to these services. They're better than just looking at it on the streaming. The power of God is moving. And I know I can help you and your family. Amen. So uh, stay in touch, be blessed, and if you'd like to give us a phone call or leave a prayer request, you can do that at 806 806- Three six eight zero three four nine, and may the Lord bless you. Is our prayer. Shalom. Bless you.